Well, here on Live in the D, you know we love music and celebrating the artists who bring songs to life. Now today, we're sharing the story of Charlotte Cardin, a multi-Juno award-winning singer, songwriter from Montreal. Take a listen to a clip of her song, Jim Carrey. I got so many Okay, we like this song. We like so it. Good. It's we're all so dancing. good. Yeah. I know. We're all like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Charlotte Carden joins us now in studio, along with, of course, friends of the show, Blaine Fowler and Lauren Crocker from Blaine and Lauren on 96.3 WDVD. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to hang out with us. We Our really pleasure. appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for having us. Of course. All of us. <laughs> Absolutely. All of us. Now, Blaine and Lauren, you guys had Charlotte with you on the radio last week. So for those who may not be familiar with her, give us an idea of, of her music and a perspective on her level of success and where she is. Well, like She's kind this of is a big deal. This is not the yeah. first time, but she won two Junos just a few weeks ago, pop album and album of the year. Yeah, that's a big Amazing. darn deal, right? I Every mean, time you step into the Junos, you end up winning something, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. That's a good record. That's a really good <laughs> yeah. record. Well, congratulations Thank are your you. two most recent Junos. Um, how would you describe your sound, and what do you think makes you different? from other artists? So my sound is, I think, a mix of a lot of things. I'm a pop artist, so I make pop music, but it's kind of, it belongs to the broad category of pop, where it's very influenced by a lot of sounds and a lot of genres that I listened to growing up and I still listen to now, so it's kind of a mix of electro and soul. It has some rock influences in there, but it's, yeah, it's, it's pop music. It's just kind of, uh, yeah, free-flowing in a few different directions. Okay, now we just want everyone to understand, winning a Juno is like winning a Grammy in yeah. Canada. Yeah. Yeah, this a is deal. a big deal. Um, but we, I was asking you, I said while the clip was playing of Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey yeah. that I bet Jim Carrey was so gassed up when he heard you singing this song about him, but he actually called you. Tell us that story. Yes. So that's a, it's, that was the craziest phone call I have ever gotten in my life. <laughs> um, the day we put out the song, so Jim Carrey was one of the first singles leading up to the album. And um, I had, we, my team and I had managed to find the number of someone who had the number of someone who had the number yep. of Jim wow. Carrey's <laughs> publicist. Wow. And so we ended up s sending a little email to his publicist. I recorded a little voice note kind of explaining the influences of the song and how I, I created the song, why I wrote it and yeah. stuff like that. And I was like, if ever he ends up hearing the song, at least he'll have a little bit of the backstory right. to it. And the day of the release, I got a phone call from Jim Carrey. Oh and my God. It was. <laughs> what did he say? So he loved the song, first of all. So I was, I was so happy. But he was so elegant and generous. We spoke on the phone for like 20 minutes. Wow. He just, um, yeah, we talked about lots of different things about, you know, creativity and, and spirituality and all these oh, things. Wow. I'm, I, he's very, I, I'm, I admire him a lot because of all the speeches and the talks that he did about, you know, the, the place of the ego in our lives. And anyways, he's, he's, all of his inspirational talks have influenced me a lot. And so we spoke about that a lot. And anyways, he was very elegant and generous. And a lot of people say, don't meet your heroes because yeah. you'll be disappointed. But in you this were case, disappointed. Quite the opposite. Just make songs awesome. about them. That's, That's exactly. your Make really songs about them. <laughs> They'll call you. They you get a they phone might call. <laughs> so listen, you're getting phone calls from Jim Carrey. Your song Confetti has more than 35 million streams on Spotify. Wow. Right? And the song also became your first hit on the U.S. Billboard charts. So what inspired this album? And what's the meaning of 99 Nights? So 99 Nights is basically the time period over which the album was written. It's, um, it really takes me back to one summer in my life. So a summer isn't exactly 99 Nights, but 99 no. sounded a little better. That sounds There's, cool. Yeah. It sounded cooler than like 93. <laughs> exactly. <you know? laughs> um, but it's a summer, yeah, during which I was going through a lot in my personal life. I was, felt like I was at a crossroads in a lot of different parts of my life. And I wrote this album with my friends over the course of one summer uh, in between touring. Um, and it was just, yeah, it's just an album that really 
brings me back to very specific, vivid memories. And we were just trying to encapsulate like feelings in songs. That's kind of gutsy though, because you're only picking from that little window. Right, but a lot was happening right. in that little window, yeah. so I was feeling very inspired. And you wrote this album on the road, which is really cool. Also so how was that different, yeah, than yeah. other albums or other writing? Well, so it wasn't. It was kind of like in between touring. So I, I didn't write it on the road exactly. Like we were in Montreal when we wrote the album, but then we kind of we were weaving in and out of touring and being back home a little bit and touring. So I wrote it when I was home and not I didn't like write the album on a tour bus. Okay, I haven't, I, I I haven't visions, done that yet. I had visions of you writing on a tour yeah, bus. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really yeah. thinking yeah. almost famous. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're, you, speaking of which, you're going to tour, I would assume. Yes, soon. so yes. so we just finished a big stretch of touring uh, a couple weeks ago. We've been touring pretty much nonstop since last July. A couple weeks ago we played our last show until summer festivals. So we have a lot of festivals in Europe this summer, about 20 festivals in France and a lot in Canada. And then um, the uh, tour will be continuing in the fall. So we, I just have like a few weeks off um, now, off shows and doing promo and writing music for the next album right now and picking up with touring again in a few weeks for festival. Busy, busy. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are you hoping to accomplish with your music in the future? Because we're so excited about your future. We love you. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much. Um, well, I mean, I think I just want to share my music with as many people as I can. Like, to me, music has always been about sharing moments and mm -hmm. those are the most important things in my life like those yeah that 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 approach to just being able to create music tell stories it's a very therapeutic concept for me to write music and to have people relate to those songs is something that um yeah just fulfills me in such a wonderful way so i just want to share my music with as many people as possible and keep touring and yeah that's awesome. Plus, I love the hook for uh, for confetti. Na 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 na. <laughs> Thank you. That gets in your head yeah. and it does not leave. It's catchy. Too, so he doesn't <laughs> yeah, he's right. he was yes. just telling me about it. Really that. cool. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Thank you, Thank Charlotte, you. Lane, and Lauren. Thanks. Always. Good Thank to see you. Always. Thanks for having me. This is me. so cool. Much success to you in the future. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much.